Part horror, part murder mystery, all wildly stylized, the giallo genre is colorful to say the least. Now there's a ton to explore there and this will by no means be an exhaustive or definitive history of the genre, but it will be everything you need to start watching giallo. So we're very excited about the remake of Suspiria coming out next month, so now is a great time to start diving into the genre it came from, the Italian mystery slasher genre of giallo. Now we had a chance to talk to Helene Catet and Bruno Forzani, the French directing team who've made a name for themselves over the last 10 years or so making gialli. Their latest, Let the Corpses Tan, is technically more spaghetti western, but the influences are still very clearly there. Plus, it's just a great movie. But before we get to that, let's start with some facts. For starters, the word itself, giallo, literally means yellow in Italian. It's a reference to the yellow covers of the pulpy mystery paperbacks that were popular in Italy in the 20s and 30s. Film adaptations of these paperbacks began to show up in the 40s. While the genre was born out of straightforward whodunits, giallo films began pulling inspirations from all kinds of different places. What came to be known as the genre of giallo was basically just crime and included any number of subgenres. And that's why giallo is a tricky genre to define. There's no one true example that fully describes giallo. At their height, in the 60s and 70s, they leaned hard into a hyper-stylized blend of violence and sexuality swirling at the center of a murder mystery. Films like Dario Argento's The Bird with the Crystal Plumage also feature an outsider prominently thrust into a local killing spree. In this film, it's an American writer working in Italy that witnesses a murder in the showroom of an art house. <laughs> The clearest examples of Jali feature insanely bold color palettes, daring camera angles and movement, the music is loud and fast and almost always dominates the mood of the scene, the sound design just crawls over your skin, and perhaps the most famous calling card, the black gloved killer. If there is a formula to giallo, Mario Bava wrote it with 1964's Blood and Black Lace, which finds a masked, black leather glove clad killer working his way through the models in residence at a fashion house. As the genre flourished from the late 60s to the late 70s, including Suspiria in 1977, nearly every filmmaker that made giallo films owed something to Blood and Black Lace. Nearing the 80s, the genre began to give way to the prominence of its own subgenres. In America, slasher films like Halloween and erotic thrillers like Fatal Attraction helped launch popular film movements of their own. But to be honest, I've only got a surface level appreciation for these films. I'm not the expert. That's why I spoke with Helene Catet and Bruno Forzani. We talked about the roles Giallo films have in their work, and they were in New York and I was in LA, so thanks in advance for bearing with the phone call audio. First of all, Let the Corpses Tan is a blast, so thank you for, for making it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but to uh, to shift gears real quick to talk uh, talk more specifically about Jallo films, I wanted to ask you guys directly uh, how how is it that you like define a Jallo film? Like, what does a Jallo film absolutely have to have in it? <laughs> yeah, just, I'm just gonna start with the tough. Yeah, one. really, really hard to define Jallo. I see three different kinds of films. You have the Jallo like uh, that Mario Argento, uh, Mario Bava made, who is like a uh, wooden it with a black uh, uh, gloves killer, uh, murders who are very erotic, murder as art, <laughs> if I could say. Sure, sure. There is a second uh, area. Someone is uh, manipulated by a group of persons. It's not about uh, uh, a killer with black gloves. It's more uh, like a conspiracy <laughs> thing. Uh, yeah. Voilà. And after you have like uh, more erotic thrillers, there's no especially uh, black glove um, killer, but uh, you have a situation uh, mixing eroticism and uh, violence. But uh, voilà. So it's very, <laughs> but it's a very difficult genre to, to define. But I think the, the most representative is uh, the Mario Bava and the Dario Argento aspect with the black gloves and the, the yeah. hoodonist type. Yeah, that was going to be my next question is what, uh, you know, what's a movie that might be the most sort of center cut kind of best example of a giallo film for you? It would be one of, one of theirs? Uh, by Deep Red from Dario Argento. Yeah, Deep Red for us. Uh, you know, it's the movie that makes us uh, collaborate. It's an uh, entertaining movie because uh, you have uh, the detective aspect, uh, the whodunit aspect, but it's so creative in the 
directing uh, in the ideas, uh, in the architecture, in the music. Uh, it's, a, it's a masterpiece. Uh, for me, it's the best Jalo ever made. There's such a specific feel to the Giallo films, like like you've been talking about, like from a technical sp- t- standpoint. And in your guys' films, you do, especially with Let the Corpses Tan, like the the leather creaking and the the colors palette that you, that you use. What's the most interesting thing for you guys working in this space uh, from a technical standpoint? Well, for us, uh, Let the Corpses Tan is more linked to uh, spaghetti western, but there is that aspect of uh, leather. In fact. Uh, when we watched Jalo as an audience, when uh, you have the final resolution, when you see the who, who the face of the killer, it's uh, so metaphoric. It symbolized for us by the leather. So when we we make our movie, we found that the leather sound creaking is very sensual, very fetishistic because uh, in this Jalo movies there is a lot of fetishism, and we love to uh, to, to take this figure to have another meaning. Because it's so strong, it's a very strong imagery. So that's why we, we love to, to use this uh, character. But we really don't like to, um, to see his face at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than just a human being. It's uh, something you can uh, represent the fantasies of a, a character. We, we like the symbolic aspect of the killer in Jalo and not the human aspect. And going back to the erotic uh, aspects of the genre, you know, obviously the, there's there's a, an enormous sexual side to the to the Jalo films or erotic side to the Jalo films. How do you think that has has changed over the years, the, the sexual side of, of the genre, if, if at all? You know, the, the Italian genre movie have disappeared in the 80s and this kind of eroticism and the violence were really uh, linked to the Italian Mediterranean culture. But us, that uh, link uh, between uh, eroticism and violence that we like because it's kind of uh, poetry, uh, morbid poetry, for us, it um, allows us to talk about uh, human relationship, uh, love, uh, fantasy, the body, the body, the desire. So it's a strong uh, um, language to talk about desire. Is there a place that people should start uh, is there a movie that people should start with to dive into the genre? Deep Red. Deep Red uh, from Di Argento, who is uh, voilà, the best. After, you have a bird with a crystal plumage. You have the Lucio Fulci's uh, Giallo. Don't torture a uh, duckling and a lizard in a woman's skin. Uh, and there is one who is very scary from a Poopy Avati, who is called The House with the Laughing Windows. One more experimental with a, uh, it's a Giulio Questi movie called uh, Death Leg and Egg. Uh, well, very cool. Thank you so much uh, for for sharing your expertise here with us. And and again, Let the Corpses Tan is is a really really fun movie. I, I had a blast watching. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. So even as Jalo films slowed to a trickle in the 2000s, the influence of their unique combination of the erotic, the violent, and the mysterious can still be seen everywhere. Think about Black Swan, a dancer psychologically cracking on all fronts. Nicholas Reffin's Neon Demon follows a model into the darkness of the industry. You can even find the genre's influence in films like Nocturnal Animals or Nightcrawler if you're looking for them. The point here is, if you're not already, start watching Giallo. So hopefully that's enough to get you started with Giallo films. It's a truly interesting genre. Thanks again to Helene Catet and Bruno Forzani. And be sure to check out Let the Corpses Tan as soon as you possibly can. It's definitely one of the more unique movies that you'll see. And as always, for more movie stuff, subscribe to Cinefix.